Hi, I'm Chris Rowan. I'm the CTO for the IP group of Cadence, and I want to talk today about the future of neural networks. Of course, we're still early in the era of neural networks, but we can start to see some of the key trends emerging. And I want to run through what I think are some of the characteristics. First, we have today a world in which most of the neural network action is taking place in cloud-based computing. That's where Facebook analyzes your pictures. This is where Siri does work to uh, recognize voices. But increasingly, it's going to move into embedded devices. It's going to be happening in your phone, in your car, uh, in your living room, so that you not only have the high recognition rates, but you have that instant gratification, that low latency, that immediate experience that comes from being able to do that work locally. So that's a big part of what's going to happen in embedded systems. The second thing I think that's going to happen is that when you move to these devices, we're going to need extreme levels of optimization. We're going to need to be able to do much more compute on these neural network algorithms per second, per watt, per dollar than ever before. And we can expect that both the energy efficiency and the throughput are going to go up dramatically by two or maybe even three orders of magnitude in order to be able to deliver these experiences. And that means innovation at the level of the neural network algorithms and in the processing hardware, seeing it more and more highly optimized for the kinds of computation the kinds of multiplies and adds, the kinds of data movement operations, which are typical of these advanced convolutional neural networks. But we're also going to see changes in what we expect from the neural network itself. Today, most neural networks in the visual field, for example, are about recognizing objects. Is that a dog or a cat? Is that a parked car? Is that a pedestrian? But increasingly, we see a move towards recognition of actions, of seeing what is the pattern of activity over a series of frames in order to be able to predict what's going to happen next. And that recognition of actions gives us a much more powerful way to use all of this visual analysis capability because it gives us ways to interact with the world and to understand the world and be protected from the world in ways that have never been possible before. And to get there, we're going to see a lot of innovation in tools as we find new ways to optimize the networks, to prepare and select data that is used for training networks, and to analyze the results coming out of these networks. So we expect uh, not only new applications, but new ways to develop the neural networks. And finally, I think that the very nature of neural network creation, the fact that they are created by a training process, emphasizes how important the data is. When you create a neural network, you may start from hundreds of thousands or millions or even hundreds of millions of images that represent different categories that you want to recognize or different sequences in which you want to identify actions. And having the right data with the right labeling is critically important. So data gets more and more valuable. And those companies, those teams, those tools which own the data, can manipulate the data, can sort the data and prepare the data are going to be very valuable. So it's a world in which a number of things uh, are really going to change. The shift towards very high levels of computation in embedded systems, um, this development of new optimization techniques, this increasing focus on actions, not just objects, so you could say verbs, not just nouns this dramatic increase in throughput, and new tools and new importance to data will make up, I think, the future of neural networks.
Thanks very much, and I look forward to talking to you again on another Whiteboard Wednesday.